welcome back everyone today we are going to see how we can create a stylized abstract cube inside of Maya and we are only going to be using a simple cube and that's all so let's get into it now what we are going to do is basically create a random cubes with different size and variations and then multiply it by using some mash techniques and then giving a different shader to give an extra look to it so let's start off by taking a simple cube here and I'm going to keep it as default for now and let's go to mash and uh, let's rename this to maybe q1 all right let's mash this and make sure you're using your gpu so it's just a little bit faster in the distribute type which is a default mash which just basically clones your geometry and we are going to change the distribution type from linear to grid now once you do this as you can see we have a grid of cubes going on and what we are going to do is instead of having this only in the x and y direction z direction we are going to have this in the y direction as well so as you can see we have grid 3 3 3 in the xyz and you can also change the overall distance you have so i'm going to make this somewhere about maybe 8 or something like that. i'm going to change the overall y direction just so we have less amount of geometry and i'm going to change the overall grid something like this and i think we need more of these all right so once you do this as you can see all this looks pretty uniformed so what i'm going to do is go to the mash network and select a random node and it should be right over here and once you take the random node as you can see it distorts everything so i'm going to change the overall position here by using random node just so we have some ununiformity going on and i'm going to change the not going to touch the overall rotation i'm going to change the scale value and usually what we do is use a uniform scale which is you basically scale everything uniformly and it stays at the same shape it just increases its scale but instead what we are going to do is we are going to change the overall randomness on this right so something and i'm going to turn off the absolute so we can go beyond that scale level and let's make this zero 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 again so we can and at the point it starts to turn black that means it's going beyond the over normal point so make sure you don't proceed that go above that so let's keep it right about there and i think it's too much floating in the air kind of thing so maybe i'm going to change the overall distribution on the y to make it zero so now it looks something like this okay so i think it looks pretty good now and um, yeah and in the random i'll make sure that i'm not kind of distorting this too much in the y direction because i want them to be pretty clumped to each other and um, yeah maybe add some of the x and z okay so i think this looks pretty good now i'm going to take another cube all right let's make this bigger bigger cube and let's go to the mash let's call this q2 all right let's mash this again and we'll repeat the same process again and again uh just some variations and let's add three we'll make this somewhere about here here and something like this let's make sure it's using the gpu go to the mash add a random node and distort the overall position on this and change the overall scale make sure it's not absolute and something like this okay so i think the original size of the cube is too big so i'm just going to lower this just a smudge and then add a little bit more to this maybe six six and six and i think now it looks good but if we do have some intersection going on so let's fix that quickly and i'm going to make the zero again to somewhere like this and i think six is too much for the bigger cubes i'm going to make this four and four and four i think now it looks pretty good and now for the third cube and i'm going to make this pretty small something about this size and this will be the most spreaded cubes so i'm going to mash this and let's call this q3 and in the mash network make sure you're using your gpu distribution set to grid and i'm going to make this maybe about 10 and let's increase the overall size on the x and the y all right let's make this 14 14 14 and uh, i'm going to select this make sure it's hard edge so you don't see all that uh, messy geometry 
and let's add a random node and uh, turn off the absolute something like this and let's change the overall speed okay so i think now it looks good i think uh, the distribution is a bit too much so i'm going to reduce this and maybe change the overall how much it's going to scatter so i think now it looks pretty good so we have something like this time to add one last cube we are going to repeat the same process just uh, make sure you're using a different variation of the cube so it doesn't look similar and um, yeah let's match this again make sure you're using a gpu let's set it to grid keep it to three i guess for now and let's spread this across let's use a random node and in the random make sure you turn off the absolute and let's change the overall position on this something like this and then you can also use random seed if you don't like the overall look and everything on your geometry to create something like this so i think i can go back to the original geometry and i can always change anything that i don't like even i can change the overall seed on the random to get a certain type of look and if i want i can also increase the number of geometry i have on this but for now i think it looks pretty good maybe add a little bit more on this as well all right i think it's good to go for now so let's start off by shading this i'm going to take a simple camera so we have a nice little look going on and let's go into the camera and i'm going to set it to something like this let me turn on the film gate and let's keep it something like this okay let's lock the camera here and from here i'm going to take my ipr and obviously the ipr is not going to show anything because we don't have any light so the first light will be our area light and it will be scattering the light from below right, let's scale this up and let's move this make sure it's set to 90 degrees and i'm going to scale this right about there something like this okay uh, let's go to the ipr again i'm going to set the camera to the camera shape and for the light i'm going to make sure the exposure is enough to make the whole scene lit up all right let's six eight so the thing is we have our scene we have the light it's not kind of illuminating and all sorts of stuff so before doing adding more lights or anything let's share this quickly so we are going to do multiple shading so for the first cube which is the normal sized cube i'm going to add a new material go to shader the standard surface let's call this q1 all right and uh, oh sorry we already used that so i guess one one or point one whatever works and let's use a brush metal for this okay and let's go to the second one let's assign a new material and let's use all right let's use something as copper now let's go to the third one which is our small cubes and i'm going to add a new material for this let's call this q33 and i'm going to add a glass material to this all right and i'm going to make sure that uh, the opaque is turned off so the light passes through correctly and for the last one you can pretty much add anything you want i think i'm going to maybe add a chrome for this so let's add chrome all right i think it's good to go now and let's turn on the ipr now okay so it looks something like this now to make the scene more dramatic we are going to add some more you can say lights and let's take another area light from here and i'm going to scale this up let's move this somewhere around here and maybe rotate this so now if you look at this and let's increase the exposure amount to four we are getting some of that light and it's illuminating the overall scene i think it looks good now let's add a more volume to this to make it more dramatic so i'm going to pause this here let's go to the render settings and arnold environment atmosphere create an ai atmosphere volume now if you don't have any idea about the atmosphere volume i've already made a video on this so make sure you check that out to know everything about the atmosphere volume there is 
Now let's add some density to this. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is uh, I think I'm going to focus this before that I'm going to turn off the volume for this one. I don't want any volume emitting from this light only from the bottom one. So I'm going to go to the atmosphere volume again and make sure the anostrophy is set to something like 0.6 maybe and samples will be 12 and I think it's good to go. Now I'm going to select my light from here, area light. Let's pause this. And uh, the one thing to keep in mind is make sure you have enough samples on your volume. And uh, the, the way we are going to change the overall look of this area light is by changing the overall spread on this. What spread is going to do is it's going to limit the overall spreadness on this. All right. So what I'm going to do is use the color temperature and let's make this hotter to something right about there. Yes. And right now, as you can see, this is the spread that means spreading everywhere. You can't see the overall rays going from the gaps. So I'm going to turn off, just change a little bit of spread. If you make this complete zero, you can see overall the lines coming from the below the light. So I'm going to select this light again. Let me just pause this and bring this downwards and maybe a bit upwards. And I think I'm going to close the overall gaps we have on this. I think the gaps are too much. That's why it's spreading too much of that light. So I'm going to go back to the overall distribution and I'm going to change the overall gaps we have on this and maybe add some more to this. And I think now it looks perfect. So let's turn this on. Now, as you can see, the spread is working as it should because the gap was too big. So I'm going to select my area light again and from here I can increase the exposure amount all right let's keep it to eight again and I'm going to change the overall spread I think it's like too much so let's make it 0.5 and increase the intensity from here all right I think now it looks pretty good so you can get all this illumination nice little illumination going on you can also make it colder if you want and I think I'm going to keep it pretty hot somewhere about here and I think I'm going to get rid of this area light and take a different directional light maybe something like this and let's scale this up and rotate this right about there and let's rotate the overall directional light so we can see how much it's affecting the overall scene and uh, maybe keep it right about there so we have this kind of illumination going on and i think i'm going to duplicate the overall directional light and i'm going to rotate this to maybe something i don't know like this and let me just pause this make sure it is set to progressive okay so one last light to add i think i'm going to add a directional uh, sorry area light from the top let's make sure it is set to minus 90 and let's scale this up and turn this on i'm going to add the exposure of about four and the volume is too much on this make sure it is set to zero and uh, maybe add six to this and to create a variation on this I'm going to do a stop this render, select the area light again and rotate this, bring this back and now it's perfect. So I think I'm going to take this directional light and select this. The iPad is consuming too much of the overall power on this. So I'm going to use a color temperature as well on this directional light and make this a little bit orange. And I'm going to do the same with this just a little bit now the overall scene looks like this you can also make this something like blue to make an overall combination of both of this and i think now it looks pretty good with the overall blues going on let me just change this okay so let's make sure the intensity on the bottom light is a little bit more illuminated i think we can add a little bit more to something like this yeah and i think i want some gaps in the middle instead of on the right side so i'm going to select this and uh, maybe go to the random and change the overall seed on this.
Okay, I think it looks pretty good now. The one thing I'm going to do is with the last area light, I'm going to stop this and make sure it is using a little bit of blue as well. And I'm going to increase the overall transmission on this and same I'm going to do uh, sorry the overall transmission on this will be two and in the bottom light two as well okay I think it looks pretty good now I think I'm going to just move my camera angle just a bit closer to this maybe to the overall center area let's lock this again I think it looks good and for the last thing I'm going to do is add a locator To this area somewhere about right there and I can select my camera again and I can make sure you click on the copy tab and you can select this locator and as you can see the distance from the camera is set to 21.343 so I can close all of this go to Arnold uh, because the original depth of field will not work this is for the hardware so all of this doesn't matter at all so you have to go to the Arnold tab and make sure you turn on the enable depth of field and the focus distance will be 21.343 three three and the aperture size will be maybe 0.2 so that's why we took a locator to understand how much the distance there is from the camera so now I can move this and I can be sure which the overall focus distance I can delete this now it's not required anymore and let's look at the overall render now All right, it looks pretty good I think we have to increase a lot of samples on the volume apart from that the rest looks pretty good i think i'm going to just make sure the overall blues on the light is a bit more all right and that's enough and um yeah i think it's look it looks good i mean you can add more depth of fill if you want you can simply select your camera and you can increase the overall aperture size to maybe 0.3 if you want i think it looks good now if you want to control the overall rays right about there what you can do is you can go to the perspective view and you can select the bottom area light if i turn this on again and uh, you can change the overall spreadness on this if you make zero you get something like this and if you make one you get something like this so you have to balance it right about in between where you think it's reasonable and you can see the overall rays going out so you can also use roundness if you want to kind of create a rounded instead of kind of linear look i think i'm going to keep it to about 0.5 and 0.5 and uh, maybe add a little bit more spread to this if i make this zero you'll get all this sharp rays going out as you can see right now so which you do not want so make sure you have that in between look where you can see a little bit of rays going out as well now i think it looks perfect so you can still see the overall glassy look you have like one glass material is kind of, kind of a glass material which you can see right about there and i think it looks pretty neat with just one material differentiating the overall look so let's so now just let's render this now and see how it looks so i hope you enjoyed this video be creative with this it was pretty simple and straightforward nothing much you just use a simple cubes and kind of randomize the overall size and variation on this add a little bit lights and you have a pretty interesting abstract scene so have fun with this if you create something out of this send me on instagram i love to see your work and again thank you for watching enjoy